Welcome to class. This is our 26th class in first grade. We'll talk about the days left before Easter Sunday, and we'll read the story about the woman whom some people wanted to stone to death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Light the fire of your love in them. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Sunday was the fifth Sunday of Lent. Wherever you were at Mass on Sunday, the priest was wearing a purple chasuble. Here's a picture of Father Geis at Mass on Sunday. You may have seen something unusual at Mass this weekend at De Chantel. The big crucifix that hangs above the altar was covered with purple cloth. Did you see that? Here is a picture showing the covered crucifix. The season of Lent began on Ash Wednesday. That was five weeks ago. The Sunday that happened two days ago was the fifth Sunday of Lent. This coming Sunday will be Palm Sunday, and the Sunday after that will be Easter Sunday. We are very close to Easter. The purple covering over the crucifix reminds us how very close we are to Easter. The covering reminds us that we really need to be getting ready for Easter. For Catholics who have made their first communion, getting ready for Easter means that it's time to make sure that we've had the sacrament of reconciliation so that we may take communion on Easter Sunday. That's because taking communion on Easter Sunday is more important than chocolate Easter bunnies. Let's look at this road map that shows the days of Lent that get us to Easter. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday. That was the day when we went to church and had our foreheads marked with ashes in a cross. Lent lasts for 40 days, not counting Sundays. You can count out those days on this map. Today, we're at the day 30, two days after the fifth Sunday of Lent. You see that this coming Sunday will be Palm Sunday. That will be the day when we remember when Jesus came into the city of Jerusalem with people praising him. The people loved Jesus so much that crowds gathered on the roads as he came into Jerusalem, and the people put palm branches on the ground in front of him as he rode a donkey into the city. Jesus was coming to Jerusalem because it was the time of Passover, a Jewish holiday. Remember, Jesus was a Jewish man, and Jesus followed Jewish holidays. Many artists have made paintings about that day. One of those artists is Pietro Lorenziti, who made this painting. It shows that people put palm branches on the ground for Jesus' donkey to walk on. One man has even put his cloak on the ground so that Jesus' donkey did not have to walk on dirt. Everyone loved Jesus on that day. And on Palm Sunday, we will be given palm leaves 
to remember that day when Jesus came into Jerusalem and people praised him and waved palm leaves. Let's look at the road map again. This time, we'll look only at the days from the fifth Sunday of Lent onward. After Palm Sunday is day 35, then day 36, then day 37. On day 38, you see a chalice, a cup, and the words, Holy Thursday. Just a few days after Jesus arrived in Jerusalem, with people welcoming him by waving palm branches, Jesus gathered with his disciples, the twelve apostles, for a Passover meal, a special meal that Jewish people have during Passover. That meal was the last meal that Jesus had with his apostles. That was the Last Supper. And there is lots of art about the Last Supper. This painting is perhaps the most famous. The artist is Leonardo da Vinci. This painting is a fresco. That means that da Vinci painted it on a wall. Over the centuries, some of the paint has flaked off and faded. When Jesus was with the apostles on that day, the day of their last supper, Jesus took bread, broke it, and offered it to his disciples. He said, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Before they ate, Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. Jesus showed them that he loved them and that he would serve them. On the road maps number 38 square, where it says Holy Thursday, there is a chalice and what I had thought was a shoe. In class, one of the children suggested that it is a loaf of bread. On reflection, I suspect the child is correct and it is a loaf of bread, or it might be a shoe. How does a shoe fit in for Holy Thursday? If you come to church on that evening, you will see priests washing the feet of some parishioners. The parishioners will remove their shoes and priests will wash their feet. It is done in memory of what Jesus did. Sometimes we call Holy Thursday Maundy Thursday and some people call it Foot Washing Thursday. Don't be afraid to come to church on Holy Thursday. Only a few people will have their feet washed, and they will know in advance. You won't need a pedicure to come to church on Holy Thursday. The next day on the map is number 39, Good Friday. There is a drawing of Jesus nailed to a cross, and there are two other crosses. There were two other men who were crucified on the same day when Jesus was crucified. We know them only as the good thief and the bad thief. This art depicts Christ crucified between the two thieves. The artist is Rembrandt. The artist cut a picture into a flat sheet of copper, a kind of metal. Then he spread ink onto the sheet of copper and then he pressed a piece of paper onto the inked sheet of copper. The picture shows Jesus hanging on a cross. On each side of Jesus there is a man hung on a cross. There were three crosses that day. Near Jesus, there are men on horses. Those men were Roman soldiers. There are many people watching. 
we are told that Jesus' mother was there praying and seeing what was happening to her son. Jesus hung on the cross for three hours before his body gave out. We remember those three hours on Good Friday from noon to 3 p.m. That is day number 39 of Lent. Day 40 is Holy Saturday when Jesus' body was in a tomb in a cave behind a giant-sized rock. And the next day is Easter Sunday when Jesus rose from the dead. On Easter Sunday, people who went to visit the tomb found that the tomb was empty. Come to church on Easter Sunday, and Father Geis will explain that. There is a very short season in the Catholic calendar that is called the Tridom. The season's color is red. Look at this liturgical calendar. It shows the church year, which repeats every year. Right now, we are in the season of Lent. It is one of the purple colors. Think of the circle calendar as a clock. The last season we were in was ordinary time. Now we are in Lent. The next season will be the season of the Tridom. The Tridom begins on the evening of Holy Thursday and it ends on the evening of Easter Sunday. At Mass this weekend, the Gospel reading was from the Gospel of John. The reading tells the story of a woman who sinned and how some people wanted to stone her to death. Jesus told the people, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. We'll read the story from your special children's bulletin. There's a, a link below if you'd like to print the children's bulletin. Ask mom or dad to help you. The title is Throwing Stones. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought a woman to Jesus who had been caught sinning. They said that in the law, Moses commanded them to stone such a woman. Jesus said to them, Let any one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. At Jesus' words, something happened. Her accusers began to go away one at a time until only Jesus was left with the woman. Jesus said to her, Go now and leave your life of sin. Sin no more. What do you think about what happened? Talk with your mom or your dad or your grandma. Ask them what they think about what Jesus did. If you had been with us, you would have had some clementines and hamantaschen cookies, little triangle-shaped cookies filled with fruit jam. The eggs in the picture were for coloring at the end of class. We said grace before our snack. Bless us, O oh Lord, and these gifts that we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Ask your mom if you might please have a cookie or some fruit. And remember to tell her thank you. 
This week, we'll do lesson number 14. It begins on page 127. The lesson is called, What Turns Us Away From God's Love? The lesson talks about sin. We all sin sometimes, but God keeps loving us. Sins are bad choices. A sin is not an accident. A sin is a choice we made to do something bad. Unfortunately, we all sin. At the end of every day, it's good to think, what did I do today that was not good? Did I hurt someone by my actions? Did I hurt someone by not doing something? Did I do something that I should not have done? Then, say a prayer to God saying that you're sorry and that you'll do better tomorrow. God will forgive you. Now, let's turn to page 127 in your textbook. Page 1, 2, Seven. We are at page 127. The title is, What Turns Us Away From God's Love? God loves us. He wants us to love him and follow his laws. Sometimes we turn away from God's love. We do things we know are wrong. We do not love as Jesus taught us. Sin is a choice to disobey God. There are different kinds of sins, but they all hurt our friendship with God and others. Yet God always loves us. He forgives us when we are sorry and promise not to sin again. Turn the page. God made the first man and woman. He let them share in his own life. But they sinned. They disobeyed God. That first sin is called original sin. Human beings are not perfect like God. Sometimes we choose to do things that we know are wrong. Sin hurts us. It hurts our friendship with God. Sin separates us from God and others. Next page. Sin is a choice to disobey God. Sin is any thought, word, or action that we choose to do even though we know that is not what God wants. When we commit a sin, we disobey God. We cannot commit a sin by accident. Sometimes we make bad choices by accident. Sometimes we do not know that something is wrong. Sins are not mistakes or accidents. We sin when we choose to not follow God's laws. We sin when we choose something bad for ourselves or for others. When we sin, we fail to love God, ourselves, or others as Jesus taught. When we sin, we are not living as God wants. Sin turns us away from God's love. Next page. God wants us to love and obey him. But God never forces us to do this. God lets us choose. Every day we make choices about what to do, what to think, what to say. God lets us choose whether we will follow his commandments. He lets us choose 
whether we will love as Jesus taught. There are different kinds of sin. All sins do harm. Some sins are so serious that they turn us away from God completely. People who commit these sins break their friendship with God. They do not share in God's grace. Other th sins are less serious. People who commit these sins hurt their friendship with God, but they still share in God's grace. When we practice virtue, we become happier and more loving. When we choose small sins again and again, we may become selfish and unloving. We may become lazy about doing what God wants. Even small sins can become serious if we commit them over and over. We may hurt others often. The Holy Spirit can help us build loving habits instead. By getting into the habit of doing good, we sin less often. We obey God's laws and live as he wants us to. We hurt ourselves and others when we choose to sin. God made us to live as one family, just as the Blessed Trinity is one. God wants all people to live in unity. Living in unity means we live together as one group of people. When one person sins, it hurts all of us. The church is made strong and holy through Christ. The church is also made strong and holy through God's love that we show to others. When we sin, we hurt our human family and the church. The Bible says, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. Even when we sin, God still loves us. When we tell God we are sorry and promise to do our best not to sin again, God will always forgive us. The textbook mentions St. Dismas on page 133. Dismas was with Jesus when Jesus died on the cross. All that is known about Dismas is that he was the good thief who was crucified with Jesus. We use the name Dismas for the good thief but we do not really know what his name was. He was one of two criminals who were nailed to crosses to die, next to where Jesus was nailed to a cross to die. While the three men were hanging on crosses, in the last few hours of their lives, the good thief said to the other criminal, we have been condemned justly, but this man has done nothing criminal. And he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus told him, Today you will be with me in paradise. The good thief asked Jesus for forgiveness and Jesus forgave him. God will always forgive you if you are sorry and ask for forgiveness and promise to sin no more. And now it's time to say our closing prayers. We'll begin with the Our Father. Remember, when you say prayers at church, to listen to everyone else and to try to stay together with everyone else. Not too fast and not too slow. We all stay together. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, please defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke the devil, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world and seek ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>